Welcome to the newest dialogue in politics, community news, human interest stories, entertainment, and information from Eastern North Carolina. Janet Connor Knox is an award-winning journalist with more than 25 years experience in print, radio, and television. This is Talking With Janet. I'm Janet Connor Knox, and this is Talking with Janet. Earlier, we did an interview with Asa Gregory, who is a Bernie or Bust supporter. And he is, uh, I understand he's an alternate delegate, is what he told us, for Bernie Sanders at the convention, the Democratic convention that's going to be taking place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Since that time, Bernie has endorsed presidential uh, candidate Hillary Clinton. And when we talked to Asa before, we were under the impression that some of the Bernie folks were going to go up to the um, Philadelphia Democratic Convention and try to see if Bernie um, was going to uh, continue and, and challenge this or, you know, what exactly was he going to do. So now we find out that Bernie has endorsed Hillary and Asa is back um, to, to tell us just a little bit about what that means, what that means with Jill Stein and how in the world uh, should Bernie supporters and delegates react now? So um, thank you for coming back. Well, we're, gonna be, back. we're gonna be using the rest of that interview, um, okay. but we just wanted to, to update everyone. It's okay. fresh and, and, and since we're not like live TV where you can do it right. just like that, exactly. we had to come back and talk with you. So um, were you shocked when you saw that Bernie had supported Hillary? Well, it, less shocked and more just like I didn't think this day would come, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I knew it was coming. I knew he was going to have to, at some point, um, endorse her. Uh, but the, the interesting thing about his endorsement that I noticed, and I, I tend to study body language and what, are, what the person may be saying one thing and, and doing another thing with their body, I noticed he didn't smile at all during his endorsement. And so that tells me there's something under the surface. The, o the other couple things to, to think about are the fact that he said he's not suspending his campaign. He's, hmm. he's not releasing his delegates. Mm -hmm. All 1,900 approximately of the delegates are, are heading to the convention. They have had a conference call with their alternates and their full-fledged delegates, and they have said, go to the convention. Okay. His name is going to be placed in nomination. Standard procedure. But are you still hopeful? Do you have a f your fingers crossed? <coughs> are you saying... I, I don't know what they know. All right, with the with the people who who are Bernie Sanders, Jane Sanders, and the people around them who are close to them, I don't know what they know, but I know that we don't know everything. Is 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 basically what I'm saying. And so you're I, trusting that there is a. I heard someone say Bernie is a good chess player, mm -hmm. and so you're you're hoping that right. this is a chess move. Yes, because I mean, from the get go, he said he would endorse the eventual nominee, mm -hmm. um, and so he's he's holding true to his word by doing this, um, but he also chose to run as a Demo for the Democratic nomination rather than an independent for a year and a half. So tell me what's happening with Jill Stein then, because okay. a lot of people like Jill Stein, they said if we can't have Bernie, we'll, we'll, we'll right. have Jill. Um, and so, you know, and, and it's kind of interesting because um, Hillary is the presumptive winner. Mm -hmm. She's the Democrat. A lot of folks say, oh my gosh, um, a woman president would be great, but she's not getting the total Democrat support because Democrats, some Democrats, young right. Democrats like yourself are right. saying, if we can't have uh, Bernie, mm -hmm. we'll go to Jill. And at one point Jill said, I'll have Bernie. Right. Bernie will can, can take the, the top position. What's happening with Jill Stein? Well, yeah, the, the thing about Jill is Dr. Dr. Stein. Um, Dr. Stein. Yeah. I, 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 I'm someone, if, if they have a title, I'll go ahead and use it until they mm -hmm. tell me otherwise. But Dr. Stein um, has been running as uh, since last June for the Green Party nomination. And um, she had some harsh words to say about Bernie in the beginning when he was running for the Democratic nomination. But I think since then, they've she wrote an open letter to him. She's talked with him. She has, like, as you mentioned, um, uh, she's offered the top slot of the Green Party nomination to him. Um, so, and, and, and on issues, it's a seamless transition for Bernie supporters. 
I mean, you look at the Green Party uh, planks, platform planks. I mean, they're they're anti-war. Uh, they are for breaking up the big banks. They're for reforming the prison industrial, you know, the, the criminal justice system, getting rid of the prison, prison industrial complex, all these things that Bernie has spoke about many times on the campaign trail. So for a lot of us, she was our plan B, a seamless transition. So it's it's really easy to, to not vote for Hillary and vote for Dr. Stein. Well, uh, are Democrats going, are they, are they, those who don't know that they should still be going to the convention mm -hmm. and backing Bernie, have they already signed up to say well, we're going to support uh, Jill Stein? Well, I think I think the word has gotten out to all the, the elected delegates and alternate delegates that they need to go to the to Philadelphia. I mean, they absolutely need to go, every single one of us. Um, and and then they're also spreading the word that even supporters who are planning to be outside and demonstrating about the the voter you know fraud and suppression throughout these primaries and and just on, on issues in general, demonstrating about those peacefully, of course. Um, they're being encouraged to be there as well. Um, because this, I mean, like, like Bernie has said time and time again, this is not about me, it's about us. It's mm -hmm. not me, it's us. Um, and so the, the political revolution is going to continue beyond his candidacy, whether he wins or loses. Um, this is a thing for decades to come. Do you think <clears throat> that Hillary is going to have to adopt a lot of the things that Bernie, I mean, you know, clearly, um, there are some things that I would assume if she wants some of those voters, right. she's going to have to say, well, you know, l l let me uh, rethink it and, and, right. and, and get, take some of uh, Bernie's platforms. And if she does, which ones do you think she would take? Well, um, some of that is a done deal already. Um, and they, they've had their platform meetings. I mean, there, there is a small chance that things can come up on the floor, but they have um, endorsed a $15 an hour minimum minimum wage. Wa national minimum wage. Right. Um, she did not endorse uh, Medicare, Medicare for all, single, uh, Medicaid for all, um, or Medicare for all, single payer. But she did endorse having a public option. So there, there are things that Bernie's campaign has, has won, but there's plenty that they haven't, like the whole TPP thing, like that language. Is, say, say what that is for the folks. Um, okay, a Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's mm -hmm. it's basically like a NAFTA for um, North America and Asia, and it's it's another one of those trade deals that is pro um, businesses and not pro worker. Um, so it's going to be a disaster. I mean, like you look at the Rust Belt in Michigan and Ohio and Indiana. I think everybody's familiar with right. what happened. With exactly. NAFTA. So, and then TPP is going to be doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's unfortunate to see that. So what happens if you get to Philadelphia mm -hmm. and Hillary Clinton says, Bernie, I want you to be my running mate. What happens then? Well, I mean, that's a conundrum, uh, but I think. Because there's so many things that, that she stands for right. that Bernie supporters don't like yeah. and so if she says I want those voters so much that I'm yeah. going to make Bernie my running mate. Right well she like I said that would be a conundrum for people like me and other supporters because you you know the reason I there are many reasons I support Bernie mm -hmm. which are positive and proactive with him but Hillary is someone I don't trust. Um, but but would it be easier to have him there? And we all know that vice presidents right. don't necessarily get to say anything under the one president. Um, except maybe Vice President Cheney. <laughs> except Vice President Cheney, absolutely, because right. under the Kennedy administration, yeah. um, uh, President later President Johnson, then Vice President Johnson, used to have to make an appointment through Bobby Kennedy right. to see the president yeah. when JFK was the president. He's a VP, he couldn't right. go in and see. So do you think that if he if he's asked to be the vice president, mm -hmm. will it be that situation where, you know what, sit him off in the corner and make him stay over there and we'll shut everything down? I, do, I, do you I think, think it, that's I, what would happen? I think it would be something like that. I mean, it would be tempting for us Bernie supporters to be like, well, he's in this number two slot, slot mm -hmm. so maybe we should vote for Clinton and Sanders. But, but there's what you're talking about. And, and frankly, I don't think he'll be ch chosen because he hasn't even be, been vetted uh, to, to possibly be a, a VP nominee. So I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's going to return to the Senate at wor worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah.
Okay. One last thing, okay. because you didn't mention this before. Okay. I feel cheated because I heard you mention it to someone else, and so I'm going to mention it to you. <laughs> you said that um, as a Democrat, you've been a Democrat all this time, uh -huh. but when you decided to support Bernie, mm -hmm. some people looked at you funny and kind of gave distance to you. Yeah. Right you um, and this was locally, it was across the state, it was um, social media, obviously with people across the country. They started to distance themselves because I was a Bernie supporter. They looked at me as kind of like a pariah. Like, why aren't you supporting our, our nominee, our eventual nominee? Because they just assumed she was going to be the nominee. And why are you going against Hillary? Wow. Basically. Okay, well, listen, thank you for coming back. Okay, sure. We, you'll notice that we have different clothes on when we come back. That's because um, we're going to go to the original interview after this break. All right? So stay tuned. Talking with Jan. Hollywood. 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 It's not for everybody. And it's not supposed to be. When I was like three or four, I went up to my mom and I told her that I wanted to be an actress. Of course, I don't want to be famous. People come here with this dream of glitter and the streets paved with gold. There's a lot of people to talk about it. I wasn't prepared. It's almost impossible for everybody in this business to be a multimillionaire star. There's a constant battle that I'm not physically the right type. Why does it have to be that the black girl, if she is a love interest and she's overweight, that it has to be, oh, I couldn't believe he liked me. It's tough to be a gay man who happens to be black in Hollywood. They say, OK, so you could play the sassy best friend who shops with the girls and tells them what they should and shouldn't wear. Uh, Hollywood is smoke and mirrors. I've been to the other side of Hollywood. It almost killed me. My son's voice saved my life. Some people, Hollywood becomes what they breathe, what they live. They don't know how to take Hollywood off when the AD says it's a wrap. You can either release yourself from it or you can stick around for the sinking. You, know, you have to carve out your own journey. There's a lot of people who live in this business, a lot of people who are of this business, a lot of people who just work in it. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, tell me, do you really believe that the parties as they stand have kind of left young people out? They've left who out? I, I, I believe so. I mean, I, I've, I've watched, um, like in, in 2008 and 2012 when Ron Paul ran, I, I compare it to the, the Bernie political revolution. They, um, a lot of young people um, flocked to the Republican Party and, and wanted to get him in, and so they were getting involved. Uh, and it's obvious that the Republican Party blocked him out, and we've seen that this year with Bernie Sanders. He's been blocked out of the Democratic primaries. So I do think that um, the youth are, you know, being left out. How, how, is, Bernie, how is Bernie blocked out? Um, well, there's, there's been a lot that hasn't been talked about by the corporate media, the, the mainstream media uh, that has happened, that's been going on. And, and if you knew everything that I've discovered. Mm -hmm. um, Tell you, us some of it. Well, um, like for instance, me personally, mm -hmm. I would have, it would have been my dream job to work for Bernie. Mm -hmm. And I was actually, talk, I was talking with a, an organization called Peace Action. Mm -hmm. And they were ready to hire me and donate my services to the campaign as a field organizer. And the it was up to the state uh, coordinator for Bernie's campaign uh, to sign off on it. But mm -hmm. she didn't return phone calls, she didn't return emails. And we're, we're talking about the person who's the head of the pack that was gonna hire me and donate my services. She never returned phone calls, primary passed. 
Okay. You know, and and it, so you for, think that was deliberate? I think it was deliberate, and 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 she, I call her a paid clog, a paid plug, whatever, you, however you want to look at it. And she's not the only one. There's been evidence of like in Michigan, Minnesota, people who have been vouched for by fellow, basically infiltrators. So there's that, and there has been coverage in the media about like the the election rigging. There have been people pur purged from the rolls mm -hmm. um, that show up, and they're like, but I'm I've been registered as a Democrat for decades, you know, in this precinct. So are you are you claiming Democrat? Are you a Democrat? I, I've, I'm actually, yeah, I've been a Democrat my whole life. Okay. Um, right. as, as far back as, well, I mean, I couldn't register when I was like 11, but, you know, yeah. I remember the, the Dukakis-Bush election. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I was pulling for Dukakis, mm -hmm. which, you know, See, total long yeah, shot, but, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but that was my first memory. And then, like, uh, the last, uh, Wilson, Wilson was the last bus tour stop for Clinton Gore mm -hmm. and I was really excited about that I volunteered I stood there with a the sheriff's deputy you know I thought Bill Clinton would be coming Governor Clinton would be coming right through there and I get the smile and nod at him but <laughs> he went a, of course a total different oh, of way course. <laughs> um, but uh, the excitement of that and volunteerism uh, really caught within me um, what do you think is, is the problem that you know I mean we understand that um, that there are lots of people who are just not happy with Democrats either. Right. I mean, there are a lot of folks that say, you know what I mean, I'm um, looking for something else. Right. And Bernie, what is something else? Sure. But he's still a Democrat. So, you know. Some would argue against that. Okay. In fact, I had a, a conversation with my father earlier, and he says that a lot of people's view is that Bernie's a, you know, Johnny come lately. Um, he just became a, de and, and Hillary has made these accusations. He's not even a real de Democrat mm -hmm. because he entered the Democratic primary and switched to become officially a Democrat then. But from being? From being independent. Mm -hmm. But see, the thing is that people always forget is that when the Democrats needed a majority in the Senate or, you know, majority in the House, he's he's been caucusing with the Democrats since 1991 when he got into Congress. Mm -hmm. So he, as far as I'm concerned, he's been a Democrat the whole time. That is the thing that people are saying, though. Uh, the, the one thing that I've heard when I've asked people about uh, about the Democrat Democratic Party, they would say, but, you know, we, we don't even know anything about him. We don't know a lot about him. And right. when it came, comes to Hillary, they believe they know a lot about Hillary based on her husband husband right. being the president. And they go, oh, but we know. And then she'll have the benefit of her husband and all of that. So why don't you think, is there not enough information about Bernie out there? Well, I think um, I think for a long time, uh, like you asked me about, has the, both parties shut out young people? Um, the Republican Party, they manipulated, when I was talking about Ron Paul, they manip manipulated the coverage of Ron Paul. They didn't give him the coverage. They, you know, I believe that there is a, a collusion between, like, the party the elites and the corporate media, because six corporations own all the basically all the media you hear, see, whatever, mm -hmm. read, um, and so they work together to silence the voices that are revolutionary. But but let's let, let me play devil's advocate a little bit. Okay, sure. The Republican Party did not support Donald Trump. Right. Yeah. True. True. He got the nom he got the nomination. Right. I, I, what do you think he did? Um, I think that he is tapping into um, something that has been building for some time. In fact, I saw Sean King uh, talking about the recent uh, shootings. He, he was being interviewed on the Young Turks, and he was talking about like this like almost tangible sense that we're on the verge of something like bad, mm -hmm. like you know, not revolution, but like just violence, like anger, and so. On the on the other side, Donald Trump is tapping into that, and so, and you've heard people say this in the media and, and all around, um, just in talk conversations on social media, whatever, that he is giving voice to the people who are most ignorant, who are most hateful, most racist, and so I think that 
made them say, oh, finally we have a voice. And so that's why they flocked to the Republican primaries to vote for him, to put him in, um, and to block out what they believe to be is the, because, you know, something they do share with the progressive movement is that they're against the establishment, the oligarchy. Uh, but they don't seem to make the connection between the oligarchy and racism and systemic racism and all that, uh, which is unfortunate. But I think that's why. We're going to be right back. Okay. I did something terrible. I don't know what I was thinking. This is dangerous. I'm, I'm, I'm begging you, don't hurt me. Whoa, that's crazy. Valentina, you're beautiful. And we're back with Asa Gregory talking to us about a different kind of political movement. You were talking about anger and connecting with anger. And so there's a lot of anger right now. You've got what it seems to be a lot of angry people who are with Trump. Mm -hmm. um, we've got... Um, some other kinds of anger that's going on, like in the, in the wake of the shootings. Right. You know, there's anger in reference to, uh, you know, what's happening with police and, right. you know, things of that nature. Um, so what do you think? Do you think, is there anything political? And then you have got John Conyers and all those Democrats who sat down in reference to gay rights, right? And they didn't sit down. And, I mean, they're sitting down for guns. Right. We're talking about but, guns. Right. Let's talk about guns, all right? Sure, and, sure. But, those guns were not connected with the black lives who right. were killed by officers and all of that. So, Absolutely. I, I mean, do you think that has some of the the problem that we are feeling, the disillusion? Um, you were talking about Conyers and, and John Lewis, Representative John Lewis, a civil rights hero. Mm -hmm. um, my thing about it, and, and I think others may share my, my view on this, and it's extreme um, sad disappointment in the fact that his, his only action in this primary was to basically deny like 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 to to like tell fibs about Bernie Sanders and his civil rights involvement as if he had firsthand knowledge that he he was not involved mm -hmm. and he he sort of said it in such a way that he said, I, I never, I was the leader of SNCC and I never saw him, which he was, and, and, and he was beaten in the streets for voting rights. So, I mean, obviously he paid his dues in the civil rights movement, so he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but he said, as leader of SNCC, I never saw Bernie Sanders. Okay, fine. That doesn't mean he wasn't there. involved in other places because things were going on all over the country. But, but then he, he carefully chose his words and said, but I know Secretary Clinton, I know President Clinton. And so in some people minds like subtly he was like telling them he was connecting his civil rights experience with the Clintons that's the only thing he did in the primary now the thing that I've heard so many people on social so, social media and in person talk with me about is they share my sad disappointment that that's what he did but when people and he was beaten in the streets for voting rights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people have died for voting rights mm -hmm. And there was so much going on in this primary where people were purged from the rules, um, their, their statuses were switched without their knowledge, without their permission. And, and, and so these people's rights to vote, um, yes, it's a party thing, but in a lot of those cases it was, it was, it was moderated by government. So that's like voter suppression. Where was John Lewis? You know, seriously. I mean, like he's paid his dues, but that doesn't mean he's done. I mean, I I would think he would want to keep fighting for everyone's right to vote, and to not suppress the vote by saying something as misleading as he did about the Clintons and and against Bernie Sanders. So when he sat down in the Congress and led that sit-in about the gun, you know, gun control, sensible gun control, I applaud him. I'm very grateful for that. But there have been so many other issues that he could have let us sit in on. 
there I'm wearing this shirt here Black Lives Matter all these names right here these people have been dying and on the back well is, isn't it and we can't right. um, I can't show but the, the the names are on the back and the front and they're right. filling up and, 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 yeah. and on the back is an image of uh, basically Trayvon Martin with the hood but, mm -hmm. but you can't see his face and there are other names back there as well but I mean you see like Tamir Rice um, Sandra Bland um, all these these folks who have been in police custody or have been murdered by police in the streets um, and I think and you mentioned the the anger and and all the people being upset and the whole police thing mm -hmm. so I think that John Lewis could have let us sit in years ago he's been in Congress for how long 30 years or more? a long time yes right so the, I mean there's so many things he could he could have been leading sit-ins about to force votes on like for instance um, Medicare for all, you know, or, um, you know, against or speaking out against the, the crime bill that President Clinton signed into law that has incarcerated more African Americans than any other president in history. I mean, so this is stuff that he witnessed and, and did not act on. So I, 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 am, I honor him. I am grateful to him for what he does and has done. But there's so many other opportunities he could have been a leader in civil rights. That's my thanks. Okay. Question is, um, Hillary is the presumptive winner of the Democratic right. nomination. Yeah, the presumptive nominee. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, so why are you still backing Bernie? I mean, why back Bernie and he's not going to get it? Right, right. So, yeah, people don't seem to, they, they don't understand, and they actually have, speaking of anger, they have anger to, to folks like me, and they call us Bernie bots. And, and Bernie Bar what? Bernie bots, Bernie bros. Um, uh -huh. You know, just like basically trying to denigrate us and say that our opinions or positions don't matter. I consider myself Bernie, but Bernie or bust. Um, what that means is uh, that we are tapped into his political revolution um, about everything, you know, the voting rights, the uh, fighting the corporations of Wall Street, getting money out of politics, um, fighting the prison industrial complex and institutional racism, all this stuff. And so we're not going to give up on that. And so Bernie, he, he you know, plays it. And he says, it's not about me. It's about you. And he's right. But, I mean, he is the one who his presidential campaign has led to this political revolution. So many people who have never been participating before, not just millennials even, but so many uh, youth and middle-aged people who have never voted before came out because of him. So what now? What are um, you guys going to do now? Because all right, right. For, for people who are afraid and what they're saying, people are saying, is like, well, if that's the case, uh, it's going to let Trump just slide right. right in. Right. Yeah, so, so that's, uh, that's using fear to influence a vote. That's, uh, again... Is it, is it inaccurate? Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's an invalid fear to have Trump as president, because I, I share that fear. Um, however, um, I don't, I think it's, it's disingenuous to say that because you are not going to vote for Hillary because you don't trust her, don't like her, don't like what she stands for, that it's going to lead, it's going to be your fault that Trump becomes president. Because, for instance, in North Carolina, 2008, Barack Obama, Senator Obama, won North Carolina barely. We're, we, I mean, a lot of us, we were, were celebrating that. But he didn't the next time. But he didn't the next time. Yeah. And in two, 2010 and 2014, the GOP had so many gains. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, yes, North Carolina has, has seemed like a purple state, but I think it's trending conservative. So my thought, and, and, and Hillary has such high negatives, people disliking her, that I don't think she's going to win North Carolina. And someone pointed this out to me. If she doesn't win North Carolina, and I vote for Bernie Sanders or Dr. Stein or Gary Johnson, one of these lesser candidates, that doesn't lead to her losing the presidency. Okay. Because if she's not going to lose North Carolina, then I can, you know, my vote is not going to cost it. They're, they're, they're saying it's time for a commercial. We'll be right back right. with Asa Gregory. Right back, right after this. What's all this? Dad, can't you knock?
doing this to me? We're back with Asa Gregory, who's talking to us about um, you know, why he's still following uh, Bernie Sanders. I don't want to make you sound like you're this only lonely guy <laughs> following, no, Bernie, no. following Bernie Sanders. But you do believe that he's the best person, the best person to lead the country. Yes, I do. But folks say, well, you know, he's old. Yeah. You know, what happens? Yeah, you know? Well, yeah, the folks who say that forget that uh, Hillary is a couple years behind him. So, you know. Is it just she, a couple? It, it's, it's a handful. Oh, it's really? like four okay. or five years. So, okay. I mean, I, I don't yeah. know why they're bringing up age when she's like right on his heels so um, <laughs> but anyway okay, and then right. Trump and then Trump just turned 70 so I mean all of them are, are around 70 yeah he is 70 um, but, exactly, but yes. I don't uh -huh. I don't think that age is an issue because I mean we saw Ronald Reagan be president and he was but Ronald Reagan used to fall asleep at the meetings remember well, yeah. I mean very seriously he fell he but, would fall asleep uh, at the meetings and, they, they, and it came out that he was falling asleep yeah but he, he was a he was a better president than Trump ever would be you know I don't wow Wow, and that says a lot, doesn't it? And I'm not saying I like Reagan, because I really don't, but uh -huh. I mean, you know. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of serving ages, uh, I don't think, it's more mental. You know, like if your if your mind isn't there, mm -hmm. that would make a difference. But age age shouldn't. Um, I mean, because President Kennedy had all those health problems that people didn't know about, and he still was able to serve. And yeah. FDR. And, yeah, absolutely. So. Well, uh, well, I guess everything that anyone could ever bring up about Bernie, uh -huh. you know, that he brought it up, and still, um, you know, it, it's been a difficult ride for him. Sure. You know, uh, what do you think is going to happen in the end? Is he going to, you know? We talk, We began talking about Jill Stein, right. head of the mm -hmm. Green Party, right. okay. and, and, and I don't know, I heard, I don't know if this is true, right. but I heard that Jill was asking him to come and join her sure. in the she party, did. and that she would even give up her seat as president and let right. him be. Um, she did. She offered, um, she, she sent him a letter. Um, an open letter to Bernie Sanders and invited him to come join her on the Green Party ticket if he didn't secure the Democratic nomination. And she was willing, like you said, to step down. And and she's not the Green Party nominee yet, so I mean, that's something doable. And, and their national convention is two weeks after the Democratic national convention. Okay. So it's all about timing. So you think Bernie will wait to see if Hillary says, do you want to be my VP? I and think if, I think those who thought that President Obama was a chess master, right. they need to understand that Bernie's even more so a chess master. Uh oh. Okay. Um, so I, I believe that he has has chosen his words carefully. If you go back and see him at the White House, if you go back and see him when he was in Vermont and had Nina Turner standing behind him, and all those people, and he, you know, it was it was after California. Mm -hmm. You look at him and the, the words he chooses to use. Mm -hmm. It's very careful. Um, he is pushing. I think what he's doing is he's trying to to swing the Democratic Party and to. I told my father earlier to redeem the Democratic Party because they need redemption uh, because they have strayed so far from the the values of the people from the you know being you know, FDR, even Kennedy, and those values have left um, and it's all about the corporate elite and and, uh, and all that. Well, which party isn't about the corporate elite? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and like like you said earlier, I am a Democrat. I've been a lifelong Democrat. I've considered myself a proud Democrat for, for many years, a yellow dog Democrat. That all comes crashing down when I see my party treat Bernie Sanders the way they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, as a national committee, they allowed him to run for the Democratic nomination. So once you agree to let him do that, then you can't, you can't treat him like crap because he's seeking the nomination. He's been caucusing with them for years. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's, his values more fit the Democratic Party of FDR's time than Hillary Clinton and, and her planks and her platform mm -hmm. would. Um, that she's basically where like Goldwater was. She was a Goldwater okay. girl um, uh -huh. or Nixon. Um, that's basically where she is. 
and and Bernie Sanders is, is like right where FDR was with like the social program of Social Security he wants Medicare for all um, it's it's like Johnson with with Medicaid and do, introducing that um, and you know what's surprising to me though is that I'm, I'm hearing that um, a lot of African-American leaders are supporting Hillary and they're not supporting Bernie is there some kind of a disconnect between Bernie and 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 African-American leaders well I think I think we touched on it earlier um, with Representative John Lewis, um, he he cho he chose his words carefully, and he was he's such a respected leader. You know, like I said, I respect him. Um, but he said those words, and so he influenced a lot of African American leaders in the Congressional Black Caucus, and they were in unison for Hillary. Um, and I think that it's unfortunately it's it's. The game of politics. Everybody's looking to get something for something. Mm -hmm. uh, quid pro quo. Um, and I think that there's probably some conversations and dealings going on there, and that's why they're throwing their support behind Hillary. And of course, there's so much about Hillary that people don't really know um, because of the the corporate media doesn't cover these things and because she has connections that can squash it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, there's a lot in my head, but uh, mm -hmm. I am an alternate delegate for Bernie. Oh. I am going to the Democratic National Convention. That's what I forgot to talk about. Yes, and, you did and, tell me that. And um, I am going, and there are so many other people who are going, and our intent is, as I said, to redeem the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Now, if they marginalize us, if they do what the, the rumors I've heard, that they're going to take away the credentials of people like myself who consider themselves Bernie or Bust, if they do that, then they're going to see a world of hurt on July 29th because there are going to be so many millions of Democrats across the nation leaving the party. Wow, where will they go? Um, Green Party. Uh, they might go to Libertarian. Mm -hmm. um, there are other candidates that they could vote for. They could vote down ballot. There are a lot of Bernie Kratz that are running uh, for congressional seats and governor's seats and things like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean. Is Hillary hearing this? Does she know? I'm sure she's aware. aware. I'm sure she's aware. But see, the thing about it is, I consider her to be a megalomaniac. Mm -hmm. I think that she is blinded by her power that she's achieved throughout the years with her husband, and I think she's delusional about certain things. Now, does she have a lot of power? Yes. Um, but I think that she just, I don't know. She, uh, speaking of disconnect, I think there's a disconnect there. You are going to be making a whole lot of uh, Democrats here in East North Carolina upset with you. Um, they already are. I'm already a pariah. <laughs> I've already been blacklisted. It's it's fine uh, because they. Know but you still stay as a you still you're still a Democrat. I will see. That's the thing. I'm not. I'm waiting to see how the Democratic Party treats people like me who have served the Democratic Party for years and who believe that Bernie and his values are the democratic values that made me a democrat. Okay. All right. We we we're, we've already run out of time. Um, you, you wanted we wanted you wanted to talk about Muhammad Ali being the greatest his conviction like like Bernie's conviction and um, Bobby Kennedy is another he hero of mine uh, speaking out against war. I mean, Muhammad Ali was such a leader in that. He was. And and he was. being against the Vietnam War and yes. and Dr. King had come out against the Vietnam War. So I mean just you know, they destroyed Muhammad Ali at the yeah. prime in right. his prime when yeah. they took his his um his yeah. belt from I mean him. it's yeah and, and it was his and he was he was not wrong right you know exactly yeah his convictions were I mean I, he's always been my hero yeah it's it takes a lot to speak out against the establishment and the powers that be because it does. they they will try their damnedest to destroy you yeah well thank you Asa thank, thank you. you so much I hope you're going to come back again oh, yeah, and you sure. definitely have to tell us what happens at the convention I will All in right. fact I'll share some videos with you guys would you promise to do I, that I will I'll, okay, I'll tag you and and, and share them with you. Fantastic. Give Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, as we always say, every time um, that we do a show, um, it, it is your job to go and do some research on candidates. Find out who they are. Find out for yourself. Don't just listen to um, the easy information that's easy to get. Do, do the research, register, and then vote. It's the only way that you can say that you've tried to change what it is that you don't like. If, if you don't like the way f the federal government is going, you don't like this, go and show folks what, what, what you can do by casting your vote. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for talking with Janet. We'll see you next time.
If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on Talking with Janet, please contact us by email, brothersideent at gmail.com. Leave your name and contact information. Without that, your guest will not be considered. This has been a Brotherside Entertainment production.